Hello, Sound Engraver here. As I've been making these videos on Super Collider and sharing them with you on YouTube, I thought it'd be best to tell you how I got started in Super Collider, what this process has been. And I'd also like to share with you three resources that have helped me tremendously in this process. And stick with me to the end of this video. I'd like to tell you how to properly learn this language if you're just getting started because there's a right way and a wrong way. And if you value your ears, if you value your oral health and your hearing, you'll want to hear this message. So without further ado, I'd like to get into this story beginning with my music education. I had the opportunity to study at the University of Washington in Seattle. The original plan was to study music education and become a high school orchestra director. I had always composed, but I never considered composition or composing as a profession. Attending the UW, I saw that there were students who studied music composition. I saw that there were faculty who were active in their composing and getting their works performed. And so I started attending these events and I started asking these different questions and I started mingling with these composition students, mostly doctorate students at the time. And I just got curious and I became more and more curious and more absorbed with what these professors and students had to say. So I started listening to a lot of music and I took a, a class or two on music composition and I thought, you know, I've always composed music. And I thought, you know, maybe I can make something out of this. Maybe this can be an applicable degree. Maybe I can make it a profession. So I auditioned for the composition department. And they saw my potential and brought me on board. For the first two years of the degree, I spent my life in the library and I listened to all these recordings and looked over all these scores. And the rich thing about the University of Washington and this academic circle, this music composition department, was their fostering this deep love and appreciation for modern music, whether it was acoustic music, computer music, or a bit of both that we call electroacoustic music. So with listening to all this music and studying all these scores and attending all these events, I became enamored with electronic music and experimental music. So with listening to these professors, like the bright-eyed, bushy-tailed undergrad that I was, I quickly learned that they were using this program called Super Collider to produce this experimental electronic music, and I loved it. I loved the sounds they were crafting using this program. I knew Super Collider was powerful. I knew it was flexible. And after asking a few things, one of my professors encouraged that I take a class on Super Collider and learn about sound synthesis. And at first I was a little intimidated by this because I knew Super Collider was an object-oriented based language. I had no programming skills. I had not taken any computer science classes before. I knew nothing about coding. And so I thought, well, you know, I'm going to give this a go. I enrolled that fall. It was a course on digital sound synthesis with emphasis on Super Collider. The first couple of weeks went by smoothly. I paid attention to the lectures and I listened to my instructors. I got the gist of what was going on in the syntax. I was listening to the questions and, and hearing the answers. It wasn't long before I knew that I did not understand the syntax. And I began to ask the same questions over and over. And I knew my instructors were losing their patience. 
and by the final project, I had spent many nights in the music lab. Just my eyes glazed over that computer screen, not understanding the code. And this weight, this despondency taking over. My final project was not impressive at all. As I remember, it was probably a bunch of sign tones just piled on. And I, I remember the code not being clean and not organized. I didn't understand any of the syntax. And I had just presented probably two minutes worth of sign tones. I can remember my instructors kind of nodding, saying, okay, that's good. And then I leave class and I make it out with a 2.1. So I did pass, and I could move on to the next part of the year-long sequence. So going against my gut, I enrolled for the winter course. And I remember that there was a policy at the time that at week five, you could pull out of a class and get your tuition fee remitted. And so I thought, okay, I've got four weeks to decide if I'm not cut out for this. I remember it being that day, that deadline, where I knew I was not going to pass this class in Super Collider. Of course, it was harder, and I didn't understand the syntax any better than I did the previous quarter. So I thought, well, okay, Super Collider is not for me. So I got my money back, and I didn't fail. But while I technically didn't fail a class, I did feel like I failed because I wanted to use Super Collider. I knew I could do something awesome with Super Collider, but I decided then it wasn't for me. But I did graduate with a music education degree and also a music composition degree. And I was really strong in acoustic music and composing for acoustic instruments, utilizing extended techniques. So I could develop sonic textures that were similar to electronic music. But electronic music wasn't far from my mind. I still loved it. I still admired it. And I knew I wanted to do it. But I decided then to just pursue it using another technique. And that's when I started considering and exploring a digital audio workstation. And I started exploring Logic Pro. I took about a year off, and then I pursued graduate studies in music composition at the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. To my delight, there was a strong emphasis on technology in music composition, but it wasn't Super Collider. It was pure data, which I also struggled with. I, I managed to build a beautiful FM module and if I touched my keyboard in any way, it would sound like R2-D2, but it was an elegant version of R2-D2. So Pure Data was one, and then they started teaching us techniques in Digital Performer. I got more comfortable with the Digital Audio Workstation, and I started developing techniques and crafting sounds using that software. At the time, it was Digital Performer, but I knew I could do this with Logic Pro. And so I graduated with a master's in music composition, and my capstone, my final piece, involved live signal processing in Digital Performer using voice, my solo voice, and also a vocal ensemble. And while I knew I wasn't going to keep on working in Digital Performer, I had the know-how to explore Logic Pro. And so I graduated with my spirit bolstered. I was like, yeah, I can do electronic music. It's not Super Collider. I'm not thinking about Super Collider at the time. It's all about Logic Pro. After that, I went to Tennessee for a summer and did an audio internship thinking, I love sound. I'm going to be in audio. I'm going to be a sound designer of some sort. And so I was exploring different job opportunities, and it didn't quite stick. I had extended family in Little Rock. I was broke. I had no prospects, and I moved to Little Rock, stayed with them for a few months, and I got my foot in the door with an office assistant job. But I never stopped 
composing. I loved learning new things in Logic Pro, and I was trying out new things, and I just I wasn't getting what I wanted. I, I wasn't getting my voice. This was a good two years of making notes, making sounds, revising, tweaking, composing, and just not getting what I wanted. I just kept on going. And in the thick of it, I developed this hunger for learning something new. And this might have had to do with my hobby, which is reading and writing science fiction, but I wanted to learn how to code. At the time, Stanford was offering free courses on JavaScript, and so I started learning the basics, and I started seeing something familiar. And I looked at a line of code, and I thought, huh, that looks like Super Collider. I've seen that in Super Collider. And then wheels started turning. And the more I got into code and the more I enjoyed the JavaScript course, I thought maybe I should give Super Collider a second chance. Maybe I should give myself a second chance. So after finishing that JavaScript course, I decided to take on Super Collider again. This was five years after I had dropped out of that class. I decided that every day I would spend a half an hour in Super Collider. Every day, five to six days a week. And I started learning. And I started applying. And I started realizing that I can do this in Super Collider. Now I can assuredly say to you that I work in Super Collider every day. Five years ago, I... I knew I would have nothing to do with Super Collider. That was my reality. And now I'm in the language. I'm in this program every day. And I have learned so much. And I have so much to learn. There is so much left on the table. And I'm very happy. I'm honored to be sharing the techniques I've learned with you. Whether you're new in Super Collider or have been going at it for a while, I wanted to give you three resources that have been invaluable to me in this process. The first is a PDF document called A Gentle Introduction to Super Collider by Bruno Riviaro. It's about 120 pages long and it's wonderfully formatted. It's clear, it's concise. It has examples, it has opportunities to play around and experiment with those examples, and it explains things in layman's terms. So it's a wonderful resource. The second is Eli Fieldsteel's YouTube channel. Fieldsteel is a professor and composer who works extensively in Super Collider, and he is a wonderful instructor who has great content on his channel. And finally, the help browser. On any topic, just exploring what it is, what it says, what examples it offers, and experimenting with those examples. So those are the three resources I recommend to either get started on Super Collider or to further explore it. And now probably the most important thing to hear in this video, and that is how to properly learn Super Collider. Super Collider is powerful, but with that power comes a potential danger. Super Collider will do what you tell it. With one small change in a number, you can change the amplitude, you can affect a filter, you can do things that can harm your ears. So always be sure that you're using headphones and always be sure that those headphones are plugged into either an interface or to your computer. Never have your computer speakers or studio speakers be the output. You want to protect your ears. If you're not sure what the result is going to be, just take a moment, set your headphones down, make sure it's plugged into the audio interface. It's a great language, but we always want to be safe. 
As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you for listening to my story and my experience in Super Collider.